Today I'm introducing the new Nikon Z30. Now this guy sits alongside the Z50 and the ZFC as Nikon's APS-C Z offerings. This one is squarely going for new, new digital content creators. So people who are vlogging, filming themselves at the gym, doing whatever kind of stuff where being able to film yourself without having a big crew is really helpful. Hi. No shade, that is a big market. There's a lot of people looking for that kind of equipment who want to go up from the entry level stuff, their phones or just all in one cameras that have a, you know, that you can't change the lens on, to something that will give them better image quality. There's a lot to love about this camera. I think they've got a lot of it right, but there's two or three things that I think are really missing from this guy. In this video, we're going to run them through and show you some of the output. If you haven't already, you can sign up for us and I'll talk you through some of those shortcomings. So the first thing that is noticeable with the Z30 is the fact that it doesn't have an EVF on top. It's the smallest of the APS-C range that Nikon have offered so far, even smaller than the ZFC, and nice to see it is coming in at a cheaper price point. It's got a built-in stereo mic that has an optional little wind fluff that when you slide it on, I don't know, it makes the camera kind of look like George Costanza on a bad day, but if it works, it works. It also has a mic, external mic input, so a traditional size cable, so you can add that on. Let's do that and see how that improves the audio. Pop on this little road mic. Now, another thing that content creators are going to really love, it does have the recording light. Now, not many cameras have this, only really dedicated video cameras, but to know that you are for sure recording, sometimes in really glary situations, like today, it can be difficult to see the screen, so having a light there that for sure lets you know it is recording is really helpful. Whether it's that you forgot to press the record button or that the card filled up, it's so frustrating if you do a take and then find that it has, you know, timed out part way through and you have to do it all over again. Now one thing that I am not sure about on this camera is it has no in-body image stabilization. Effectively the guts of this camera are the same as the ZFC and the Z50, same sensor, broadly the same specifications, 4K 30p, 1080 120p, uh, and no headphone port, which I think on this camera is a real downside. If you're aiming for people who are going from their, say, smartphone up to something better, this is great. But as you keep going up and up and up, you want to be able to check your audio. So not having a headphone port, I think, is a big miss on this camera personally. Of course, being by yourself, you're not going to be monitoring it as you record, but to be able to check your levels beforehand, that's really helpful. And there's something that's even dumber with the audio on this camera. So check this out. When I'm in selfie mode in video, there's no audio meter showing. So I can't see if my audio is peaking and there's no headphones, so I can't check it either. When I turn the screen around into normal mode, then my audio meter appears there. Turn it back. And it's gone again. And it's not a matter of display option. As I press the, my display button at the back, there isn't the option to turn it on. So if I go back again, and now I hit record, then I have my, my levels, and as I turn it back, now I have the levels and I'm able to see myself, and it works and it's no problem. But as soon as I stop recording, my audio levels disappear again, and if I hit record, now I can't see it anymore. That is quite dumb and must be a simple firmware update. Now just circling back to the VR issue, I don't have the steadiest walk right now. I have the internal VR and the electronic VR both turned off so you can see how it's doing. Okay, now let's turn on the VR. So I'm gonna turn on vibration reduction just to normal. The electronic vibration reduction is still off though. Okay, so with the vibration reduction internal set to normal, how's that looking? Now I'm going to turn vibration reduction back to off, but turn electronic vibration reduction on. Let's see how electronic vibration reduction does. And finally, let's put vibration 
and electronic vibration reduction on. So this is with both enabled. And I have to say, I have no shade towards content creators. Do your thing. I would, however, say walking with a camera like this, I feel a little bit self-conscious and there's already kids heckling me. So there's something. Now the Z30, like any camera, is going to benefit from you taking the time to get to know it and setting it up exactly in the way that suits how you personally shoot. If you're thinking of getting this or you're already in the Nikon Z system, check out my complete expert setup guide. It covers every single camera in the system. The Z30 will be added any day now and shows you a quick setup guide physically around the camera, what everything does, and then how to customize it to get the most out of it for how you'd like to shoot. Links for that one are in the description below. Now, one thing that may hold this guy back is a quite a limited range of APS-C lenses for Nikon Z. Now, of course, you can add any lens to this. I could put my 50 1.2 on here if I wanted, but it's not really, my arm's not quite long enough to do that. But given that this lens that they're shipping the kit with is a 16 to 50, 3.5 to 6.3, you know, it's not the fastest aperture. So getting a super blurry background is not going to be that easy. And you don't want to be just switching to using uh, a manual focus fast aperture lens because you're going to keep going out. In terms of the internals of this camera, as I said, it's pretty much the same as the ZFC and the Z50, which means the image quality is fantastic. This has, you know, slightly tweaked with the latest generation of processor and, you know, the software for focusing and everything. It seems to be doing great. I'm gonna test it next at f1.8. One thing to think about though, a lot of content these days is created vertically. Now, I can just change this remote and then hold it vertically. That's fine, it all still works, it's no problem. But the whole point of this remote is that I'm able to use it as a tripod and I can't really get the camera to hold it in place there. I mean, I could try and see if that's gonna work, but you would have to have it at exactly the right level. Another thing, the tripod itself, I think it's actually made by Small Rig. The nice to have the Bluetooth remote built in there. That's handy, and then you can, you know, just start and stop recording, change your settings and everything. But it's, it's a bit janky. Even when you've got it fully wound down, tightened up as much as you can, there's still a fair bit of play in there. Great that you can rotate this to get it to different positions, so you can have the legs be in the most stable position depending on what terrain you're in, that's nice. It all works, but if you're going to use a lens much bigger than this, you know, I put my 24 to 70 f2.8, it was really at the limit of what it could hold, but something like the 24 to 70 f4 or the 51.8, I think you would be able to put onto this little guy. That's too bright. That's interesting. You can't use the exposure comp button on top of the camera when you have the screen tilted to yourself. You can only use the touch screen. If you close the screen, then the button works again and you can do it in the traditional way. So for an old fuddy-duddy like me that's used to using the buttons, that's a bit confronting and weird. But I guess if you're used to doing everything on a touch screen, which is who this camera is aimed at or people who are upgrading from that, maybe it makes perfect sense. Well, at 2428, I can get a nice soft background, but you can see that makes it an effective 38 mil and with a big head and a regular length arm, it's a little bit too tight. But you could certainly go for like the 14 to 24 to eight and then go to like 20 mil or something like that. But this is certainly, yeah, a little bit too tight and that's as wide as I can go on this lens. But the 28 does make a difference over you know, being at f4.2 or whatever I was uh, on the variable apertures. Now you have to think about how often do you use an EVF if, and it's going to be completely personal. I know for myself I love having flippy screens, I find them really useful, but my impulse is still to put the camera up to my eye, especially in high contrast areas, not having to look at the screen exposed is really helpful. So if you're considering this as the second camera and you're primarily a still shooter, next time you're out shooting, just check how often you use the screen versus the EVF, because you might find the lack of the EVF is a bit of a big adjustment. 
As is becoming a tradition, we stopped off at my local temple and I got some sample shots that I'll be sharing with you as well as some 4K and slow motion 1080 video footage at different settings, including super high ISO. So check out the samples, you can download them for free below. So I have to say at ISO 16, 18,000, I'm impressed with how well this is doing. No, it's not perfect, ASI is so 25,600, but it's doing it and it's smooth. I'm sure it's gonna be grainy footage, DX sensor, 20,000 ISO, but it is managing the focus here, even down at F6.3, so I'm impressed. So look, that's my first hand-on thoughts with this guy. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. Do also check out all the sample files I'm making available and the new Bodyscapes course link for that is below. I really think for the target that they're aiming for, this is pretty great and they're kind of nailing it. I do think for the more serious producers, then having a headphone port would be really useful. And I think it's ridiculous that you can't see your audio levels when you're filming yourself. That surely can be fixed simply with a firmware update. The TLDR, I would say, is that if you are a serious stills photographer looking for a second body and you want it to be APS-C, the Z50 is probably your best bet. If you're looking for something that's fashionable or you just really like the design of the older look of the ZFC, that's a good one as well. And it's kind of halfway in between. It's got the screen and stuff that's great for video creation on the move as well. And if you're maybe not necessarily used to using an interchangeable lens camera, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, and maybe you're coming from a fixed lens compact camera or your phone, then the Z30 is most likely really going to fit your needs. So content creators unite, you have a great tool, just be aware of your audio and maybe make sure you've got all that dialed in before you go out. Because personally, I don't like having to leave my audio on auto, which you kind of don't have an option if you can't see your levels. Let me know your thoughts and what you'd like to see next. I'll see you soon. Are you broken, Tyson? What's wrong? I know it's hot, but seriously, are you okay? What's going on? This is a good little camera autofocus test, isn't it? Are you actually awake? What's going on right now? Today it feels like 42, which is over 100 Fahrenheit. Well, big stretch. Hey? Hey, crazy girl? Well, that's the cutest video that this camera's ever gonna take. I guess I can return it now. <laughs>